If you ever end up in the situation of being a 50 cal gunner on a vehicle, the sketchiest thing is that damn trigger. There was a lot of versions that didn't have a safety on that trigger for the butterfly. There's a lot of versions now that do have a safety, but when it didn't have a safety, I was always worried about being up there in that turret on that 50 cal and hitting a bump and just, whoops, hit, hitting that trigger by accident because you're kind of have your thumbs near it and accidentally hitting that thing and sending a 50 cal round, you know, down the road or into a building or something kind of crazy by accident. What's up my friends? Welcome to an all new video. I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos and today I'm answering a question that I've gotten quite often which was how do you be a gunner in the United States Army? A lot of people think that it's an MOS and it's not. There are MOSs that will allow you more of an opportunity to possibly be a gunner but for the most part a very specific MOS of being just a, a 50 cal gunner or a gunner in general isn't really an MOS that you can just simply enlist to be. So that's the focus of this video is to talk about like what situations you can possibly be in to become a gunner and starting off, I mean, my MOS, if you're not familiar, I was an 88 Mike and there's a lot of opportunities for 88 Mikes to be in a gunner position. Because here's how it kind of would usually work on a deployment. You have your haul assets, your vehicles that are, you know, carrying ammo or fuel or barriers or whatever supplies that you're possibly, you know, moving from one place to another, but you also have to have security, right? You have to have some kind of gun trucks to provide security over those vehicles. In most cases that came internally. So especially on my second deployment that came internally, we had our own MRAPs and we had our own kind of designated gun crews that were 88 mics and fuelers because that was the combination of what we had in our platoon at that time was 88 mics and fuelers. So that's what made up the gun crews. Most commonly, it would usually be like an E4 or below. There was some situations where we have maybe someone who's an E5 who's just pretty good with a gun, so we'd like to have him to be a gunner, or he wanted to, to be a gunner, or she wanted to be a gunner, whatever the you know kind of circumstance called for. But for the most part, it's usually E4 and below because NCOs are usually inside the vehicle as vehicle commanders. And we had a wide range of weapon systems. We had you know the 240 Bravo, we had the 50 Cal, um, I don't think we used any of the Mark 19s, and I'll talk about the different weapon systems in a little bit too, but it really just varies based on your platoon, what your primary weapon systems are going to be for those crew served weapons or those mounted weapons up in the turret. But you can also have other situations where someone is kind of basically considered a gunner. Because you also have gunners that are basically just dismounted, right? You have your 11 Bravos, you have your scouts, you even have other, you know, you know, MOSs. We even had 88 mics that were considered gunners and they carry dismounted weapons. So you have the 240 Bravo or a saw or something along those lines. And those individuals are designated as gunners. Those guys usually hated it because you're carrying around this heavy weapon. Everybody else is carrying around an M4 or whatever. And then if you're a designated gunner, then you're carrying around a saw or something like that. That's the most common one is usually like the saw, but I've heard of other people having to, you know, have a 240 Bravo. So those individuals are usually your gunners too. It, it mainly like will apply for dismounted operations for like your 11 Bravos, maybe your uh, scouts, your 19 Deltas and everything like that. So those individuals will be gunners on dismounted, but they could still be gunners mounted in a vehicle too. It really just depends on your unit, especially when it comes to like 11 Bravos. 11 Bravos for some infantry units are all just ground, right? They're just all foot troops, right? They don't have any vehicles. And then certain other ones that are kind of designated a little bit differently, they may have Humvees, they may have Strikers, it just kind of depends on the unit. And then you have vehicles and then you might have an 11 Bravo that's a gunner for that vehicle. Really the easiest way to think about it, if you want to be a gunner, that's what you want to do. A lot of MOSs have the potential of that. Typically your ones that mainly do with vehicles and combat type of situations, are you know ones that are in that probability of becoming a gunner. Definitely chances are probably pretty high with 11 Bravo, just depending on if you have vehicles though. If you don't have vehicles, then maybe not in the same way like you might want to be, like you might want to be a 50 cal gunner up in a turret. And if your infantry unit doesn't have vehicles that they're using, then you might not be able to make that happen. But definitely things like, like scouts, uh, tankers is a big one if you're 19 kilos, but that works a little bit differently because you're a 19 kilo, so that means you are assigned to that tank and you could be really any role inside that tank. A lot of it depends on rank and experience, but you can be any role as a driver, as a gunner, as a loader. Usually once you become a non-commissioned officer or higher up ranking and experience, then become that TC or that tank commander. In some units, that's an officer, so that kind of fluctuates as well too. So some will be, you know, higher ranking NCOs, some will be an officer, and usually your platoon leader, you know, will be a tank commander for their vehicle, and then you have like your platoon sergeants that have, you know, their tank, and then your section sergeants that have their tank that they're the tank commanders for, and so on and so forth. So when it comes to actually being a gunner, 
then you have to kind of qualify with that weapon system. Usually you will have that gun crew, that's a driver, a TC, and a gunner typically, at least at those three minimums. For other certain weapon systems like a tank, then you also have a loader and stuff too. But for your most common ones, you have those three kind of primary ones that people go through gunnery with to make sure that they're proficient as a team. And that's like a key thing. You have your driver that you know is moving into a battle position during gunnery. You have your TC that's giving the commands, and maybe spotting you know the targets or the gunner spotting the targets and calling them out to the TC, and the TC is you know telling you to engage or when to engage. And it's kind of like this whole process that you do for actually gunnery. So you get proficient as a crew to be a gun crew, and that's usually how it's kind of set up. So then once you are proficient with that crew, if you want a deployment, then that's the team you kind of stay with. So you have your set driver, your set gunner, your set TC for your crew, and you work together because you've already trained together. That's even the same with tanks too. You're gonna to go through tank gunnery, even with Bradleys as well for your scouts. You have, you know, Bradley gunnery, tanks, or whatever, you know, you have gunnery in general that you're going, you're doing for all the different types of weapon systems, whether it's a mounted type of system with a vehicle, with a tank, or even dismounted type of situations. Now, as you move up through the ranks, right, eventually you become a point where you're the TC now and you can't necessarily stay a gunner forever. So don't expect to, if you're set on wanting to be a 50 cal gunner and you're just gonna be a gunner for the rest of your army career, you're gonna eventually rank out of it. Now let's talk about weapon systems. And I actually polled you guys over on YouTube to kind of see what weapon system would you be most interested in to be a gunner for? The majority of you guys actually said the 50 cal, the cruiser weapon of the 50 cal machine gun, the M2, the Ma Deus, whatever you want to kind of call it. But that was the, the majority of individuals that they wanted to be the 50 cal gunner. Your 50 cal weapon system is primarily your lead vehicle. Usually you have your lead vehicle has a 50 cal and then the vehicles in between, it's most commonly a 240 Bravo, but that's not to say that's how it always is. Sometimes there are other situations that have people using a saw, using maybe another 50 cal, whatever the case is, but your most common you know, lead vehicle weapon system is the 50 cal. There are some units that have setups where they use the Mark 19, and that was another sort of popular-ish one, not actually second place. Second place was actually being a tank or Bradley main gun uh, gunner, and then third place was actually uh, the 240 Bravo, so then fourth place, I guess, is the Mark 19. So there are some units that'll use the Mark 19, which is a grenade launcher, as your lead vehicle one. A lot of times with certain kind of combat situations, it's not a good idea um, for convoys because you can't really give warning shots with a Mark 19. Not very good ones anyways. So for main convoy ones, they won't usually do that, but for maybe assault type of elements, you might have a Mark 19 uh, as a lead vehicle if you know the objective is to, hey, we're gonna assault this objective, so we wanna have that Mark 19 at the front to really jack some stuff up. But if you're doing like a logistics convoy or something like that, the Mark 19 usually doesn't make a lot of sense to be a lead vehicle. Now, that survey was on YouTube, and sometimes they conduct other surveys on Instagram as well, so make sure you're following me. Link down in the description down below to make sure you follow me on Instagram so you can join in, in some future surveys as well. So what weapon system you get just depends on your unit and what weapons they have and the type of mission that is going on. Your infantry units, your MPs, those kind of things, they might have Mark 19s, pretty common in there, but other units, it's maybe 50 cal or 240 Bravo or even possibly a saw. That one's usually more of a better dismounted type of gun for you know a machine gun. Not that great of a mounted one, but sometimes you know you gotta work with what you got, and sometimes that's what units have to work with, and so that's what you get stuck using for a cruiser weapon. But it's not necessarily your common cruiser one that is preferred. Usually, like I said, it's usually gonna be the 50 cal or the 240 Bravo. And some of you might be curious about like, you know, for helicopter gunners and stuff like that. And I don't have a whole lot of experience with that, so I really couldn't tell you for some of that. So if any of you out there maybe have been in maybe that type of unit, aviation unit, maybe for, you know, medevacs or for certain other type of situations where they have gunners on the helicopters, what type of scenarios did you see that of individuals who got to be those type of gunners? Leave me some comments maybe down below. My experience with being a gunner, I really only had it a few times. I had it uh, during some training events, a couple of times during some combat situations where I was the gunner for, I think we had a 240 Bravo on both of the times that I think I had an opportunity to be a gunner in a combat situation. But I've done it also during a lot of times during training events or live fire events where I was manning a 50 cal. And like I was talking about at the very beginning of the video, it was always the, the scariest thing was that that there's no safety on those things. There were some people that do tricks like put a 
empty 50 cal casing underneath the butterfly or whatever. But then if you're in a situation you gotta hurry up and fire that thing, well then yeah, you gotta move it out of the way. But a lot of the more modern 50 cal weapon systems actually have a safety on it. So you turn like this little, kind of like a knob or whatever that kind of engages the safety to it. And then if you gotta take it off the safety, then you just flip it the other way and it, it kind of keeps it to where you can have a safety on there. But depending on the unit, if they have those newer models of 50 cals or the older models of 50 cals that don't have a safety. Now, if any of my veteran viewers out there or even current individuals that are currently in the army right now have had some experience, you know, maybe getting to be a gunner, I'd love to hear down in the comments, you know, what's your MOS that got you into that situation and what weapon system did you get to be a gunner for? Those of you that are not in the military, if you're interested in being a gunner, you have some questions, or maybe you have a preference of what type of, you know, type of, you know, cruiser weapon that you would like to be a gunner for and you need to participate in that little survey that I did on, on uh, YouTube, maybe leave some comments down below as well. And let me know what kind of cruiser weapon would you like to be a gunner for and all that kind of stuff. Now off over here, got some more videos you can check out. At the very top up here, I got a video on actually like M4 qualification. So if you want to learn a little bit about M4 qualification, then you can check that out. And then down here, whatever my latest and greatest video is, check that bad boy out. Thank you so much for watching. Check out links down in the description for social media and everything else. I'm Christopher Chaos and I'll see you next time. See ya.